All right, everybody. Today, we're going to be breaking down the power that a strong personal brand is going to have on your business. I'm going to be emailing out the recording of this tomorrow for you. And I also have a worksheet that I'm going to share at the end of our time today. And it'll also be with the email tomorrow in case you miss it. And in case you're wondering why I'm not going to share the worksheet now is because I want you to be active listeners and complete your worksheet at a different time when you can really put some thought into it. A personal brand isn't something that you want to slap together. You really need to take it seriously. Now, some of you might be thinking, why do I need a personal brand? My brokerage does plenty of marketing. And if you're lucky enough to have a brokerage that does marketing, that's fantastic. But a strong personal brand is going to help you elevate your book of business to new heights. You're going to use intentional, consistent efforts so that you can reach and connect with people that are outside the scope of your brokerage or your team's marketing. And these people, by finding you organically through your shared interests, are going to connect with you and be some of the biggest supporters of your business. So even though your name may not be on the front of the building or the billboards, it's your career, it's your book of business, and you need to be the biggest advocate for yourself. So I want to encourage you all to see yourselves as the newly appointed chief marketing officer of your brand. So let's get started as we're talking about personal branding. What, what does that mean? What's the definition of it? Personal branding is the conscious and intentional effort to create and influence public perception of an individual by positioning the person, you, as the authority in their industry, elevating your credibility, and differentiating yourself from the competition. So this will ultimately advance your career, increase your circle of influence, and have a larger impact within your industry. So set a different way. That's the formal definition. This is a relationship with you, the person, instead of a company. Now, the process of personal branding involves finding your uniqueness, building a reputation, on the things that you want to be known for, and then allowing yourself to be known for them by intentionally amplifying these qualities. So for clarity, I've broken our session down today into five steps that I'm gonna put in the chat just so you can follow along, but I will also have this on your worksheet for you. So no need to write these down. So our first step is to define your brand and identify your target audience. And this is where we're gonna spend a lot of time today because this is a very introspective exercise is defining your brand. The next step is to establish a consistent online presence, curate your offline presence. We're gonna build relationships and network, and then we're gonna seek feedback and adapt as we work through the process. Now, your ultimate goal is to create something that conveys a message and that can be monetized. So what we're going to attempt to do through this exercise and you continuing on after our session here today is let's find what makes you unique and let's exploit that in the service of others. And exploit sort of has a negative connotation to it, but that's not what we mean here. By developing a personal brand, you're figuring out how to package and market the experience of working with you. Because people don't do business with companies. They also don't have relationships with companies. They do business and have relationships with people that they like, have confidence in, and those that make them feel good about their decisions. So think about the marinara aisle in the grocery store. Which brand do you like? Is it Prego? Is it Ragu? Is it Classico? I'm a Classico girl myself. But even in asking you to think about the marinara aisle, you probably thought of your brand of marinara. <laughs> Bridget's a Rouse girl. I bet you thought of your brand of marinara before I even asked. 
And in visualizing this aisle, there's probably 50 different marineras to choose from. And the majority of us pick the same one every single time. Why is that? It's because we're comfortable. We're confident in the way that it's going to taste. And we aren't really willing to take a risk on changing up our traditional spaghetti recipe. Because most of us, most of the time, it's not just us counting on it to taste the same way every time. The rest of the family expects it to be a certain way as well. Imagine the disappointment when mom says, it's spaghetti night. And then when the plates arrive, she's changed up the recipe and it's not what you expect. That's comfort food. So the same applies when someone's choosing any other brand or person to get into business with. They're going to choose the one who makes them feel comfortable, confident, and well taken care of. Building a personal brand is going to be a really big driver of your business because human to human bonds are much stronger than a human to corporate bond. The stronger your brand, the stronger your business is going to be because your reputation is going to be able to lead for you. Your ultimate goal here is to be like your favorite marinara brand, except for real estate. When people think of real estate, they immediately think of you. That's your ultimate goal. So here's our process again. Define your brand and identify your target audience. Establish a consistent online presence. Curate your offline presence. Build your relationships and network. And seek feedback and adapt. So let's get started. How do we begin creating our personal brand? We need to begin with defining it and identifying our target audience. And this is where we're going to spend a lot of time today because it's a very introspective activity. It's hard when you're setting out to establish a brand. You, you don't just wake up and go, aha, I've got it all figured out. You have to really dig and figure out what it means to you because you have to stay consistent with it for a really long time. The first step, like so many other things, like real estate and most other things, is you just have to get started. This is one of those get going and learning as you go things, because if you try to have it all figured out before you begin, you're never going to start. So do your best to get to the acceptance phase and relax with the fact that you don't have to know everything. You're going to make some mistakes along the way, and that's a lot of the process. So being resistant to the process is not going to be in your favor. Get in and doing is the best way to learn. And if you're very fearful of making mistakes, you're probably not going to get far down the path of creating a strong personal brand. Think about when you're getting ready to make post a video on your social media platform and you redo it 20 times. That's that's not the confidence you need in your personal brand. So as we explore building that confidence so you can push out the content that stays consistent with your brand, that's going to help you be a lot, it'll weather those mistakes a little bit better. So building a personal brand takes a ton of work. And if you're taking it seriously, you need to assign yourself that chief marketing officer role. It's brand you. So if you wear this hat often, you're going to be seeing the results sooner rather than later. So to further, we've gotten started to further establish our personal brand, we need to have a focus. The best personal brands are really specific. So think of the saying, the riches are in the niches. If you're trying to be everything to everyone, you're not going to find your raving fans. Nobody gets excited and loses their mind over great value or the up and up brands. You need to have a very specific focus to define your audience. And since we aren't attempting to be the up and up brand, you can't expect everyone to like you. Do you like everyone that you're exposed to? I, I don't. <laughs> so don't expect the same in return and don't get your feathers ruffled by these keyboard cowboys. They don't know you personally. They just don't like your brand and that's okay. And they're probably, they're probably pretty unhappy. They're trolling other people online. And that's not who you want to be doing business with anyway. So if you get a negative comment or a dislike, 
Don't take it personally and keep going because every for every person who dislikes your content, there's going to be many, many more who just can't get enough of it. Another way to be specific with your brand is to not attempt to be everywhere. We're going to pick two to three platforms that you know how to use and you're comfortable using, and we're going to build your audience there. Your personal branding efforts it needs to supplement your business and not be your business. Keeping a regular stream of content on 15 different avenues is going to quickly turn into a full-time job. So if you're now the chief marketing officer for brand you, you're going to have to do this in conjunction with all of the other necessary activities you do as a real estate agent or whatever your role is. So don't overcommit and stress yourself out as a result because a stressed you isn't going to be good for the brand. And that's what we need to consider regularly. Is this good for the brand? Because you're the brand. So pick two to three platforms and go all in on them. So quick exercise. You might have some challenges in really nailing your focus for this step. So we need to figure out what makes you unique? And if you aren't sure about this, if you don't have a ready answer, it's time for some introspection. Now, a lot of these questions are on your worksheet, so don't worry about writing down the questions per se, but if you have something to write with, I want you to just write down or concentrate even on the first thing that comes to your mind when I ask these questions, and you can fill them in more thoroughly on your worksheet later. So, here are the questions we need to consider and ask yourself as we really define your brand, okay? What is the problem that I solve for others? What is my personal mission? Why am I here selling real estate? Why am I doing this? What have others complimented me on? What am I passionate about? And where have I had successes in the past? And how can I help others find the same results? Again, these questions are gonna be on your worksheet and we did go through them really quickly because I want you to think of the first thing that comes to mind because that's that's your authentic self talking. That's your intuition and your subconscious going, oh, I know. So don't ignore those first thoughts. But if you're trying to uh, refresh your brand and lean into who you would like to be and develop some good habits, maybe dig a little deeper and don't go with that first thought. But that that's what I wanted us to do because this is a very thoughtful thing that we're putting together. And this may take a little time to think about, but once you find the answers to these questions, this is what your brand's messaging is going to circulate around. That's why it's important to think about it, write about it, and cobble something together so you can keep your messaging consistent and simple once you've found a clear direction to go in. Now, as you define your personal brand, you're going to need to uncover and accentuate that genuine and authentic self we've been talking about. If you're trying to be a certain way or pretending to be someone or something that you're not, your personal brand's not going to take off like you want it to. People are really smart and they can see through fake or overproduced pictures and videos, overly scripted content and they can feel it when you aren't being authentic with them. So knowing that your posts don't need to be super curated and perfect. Show your mistakes and keep it re as real as possible. And this makes me think of another quote. Uh, People aren't gonna remember what you say or do, but they're gonna remember how you make them feel. Maya Angelou said that, and this applies to your branding and marketing as well. So pay attention and listen to your audience and keep giving them the real you. Because if you're attracting people who are coming in for this cartoon character caricature that you've created of yourself, 
those aren't going to be the types of clients that you want to attract. You are the thing that no other brand has. This is your brand exclusive, you. So lean into your true personality because your tribe's out there, your raving fans are out there, and you need to share your true self in order to find them. So if you're masking things or not show, fully showing up, that's going to prohibit you from finding those people that truly connect with you. Now, as we continue to work towards defining our brand and really identifying our target audience, there are things for you to consider because having, having that immediate mission and direction for your brands, it is challenging to get clear on. So we're going to need to ask ourselves, what are what is it that I want to be known for? What's going to be my legacy in doing this around the brand? What do I want people to say when I'm not in the room? How would I like people to describe me and my work? These are really important questions to ask and consider because as you define those and answer those questions for yourself, every person you encounter is going to either in person or virtually, they're going to be experiencing your personal brand. So just like our marinara metaphor, they need to feel good about choosing you as their agent. They need to feel confident in your abilities to represent and negotiate for them. Other agents, uh, your counterparts, whoever you're working with on the other side, they need to feel like you're treating them as an equal professional and with respect. And your clients, they need to feel like you're working to get the deal done in a way that works for all parties. So when you think of personal branding, you may think of social media and marketing, but it's an all-encompassing thing and they're big pieces of your personal brand as well. So once we get our thoughts organized and down on paper, we can shift to the later more actionable steps. So all of this thinking and answering questions is really helping you to do that first step. Identify your target audience and specifically define your brand so that you have a strong foundation to build on. So this isn't something we're going to accomplish on this call, but once you define your brand and identify that target audience, we're going to move to the next step, and that's to establish a really consistent online presence. And this takes some strengthening of our consistency muscles. Consistency, it's key for a lot of things, but especially with branding. And you need to be consistent with everything that you do the way you communicate, your appearance, the ways in which you treat others. And yes, a couple of these things may feel a little bit superficial, <laughs> but perception becomes people's reality and we're all human. So initial impressions are really important and you need to think about these things as you dig deeper. So your appearance, what message are you conveying to your potential clients when they see you for the first time, either virtually or in person? The clothes you wear, your general hygiene, is your car well-serviced? You don't need the most expensive products on the market to emulate a positive professional appearance, but you do need to be intentional and curate an image that aligns with your personal brand. So, can you think of someone that you know or you've seen that uses their appearance as part of their brand? Maybe it's the local farm stand guy who always wears the same straw hat and overalls. Can you think of anyone? I've seen agents who wear red all the time. Someone who wears fancy scarves year round. Agents who only wear shorts and flip flops and t-shirts. An agent that brings her Pomeranian everywhere she goes, and agents who only wear suits. Now, I only described the agents that I thought of when I was putting this together in very minimal adjectives. T-shirts and shorts, brings their Pomeranian everywhere they go, only wears red, only wears a suit. But even in describing them with the most basic of their appearances, you visualize them in your mind and you made some type of reference about who they are as a person. 
That's okay. You're not being judgmental. You don't have your gavel out. That's human nature. And that's why curating your appearance to align with your brand is so important because we are human and our human brains work to classify and categorize everything that we see so that we can understand it. Everything you see. So the tree outside, the car driving down the road, a person walking up, are they familiar? Is it safe? Is this someone I want to interact with? Is this someone I want to engage with further? Is this someone I want to stay away from or someone I just have to talk to? And all of that happens in milliseconds in our brain. So if your appearance and presence isn't, is sending a message to everyone you want to meet, you need to nail down what you want that message to be. And that's a lot to think about. <laughs> So next in the category of consistency, let's talk about our communication skills, because just like our appearance sends a message, our communication sends a message. So what message are we sending versus what we actually say? Do your clients feel like you're a warm, approachable problem solver? Or could you use some additional soft skills to improve that bedside manner? I want to encourage you to slow down and take a look at all of your communications. Is the other person feeling heard and understood? Put yourself in their shoes. If someone sent this to me, would I be okay with it? How would it make me feel? Communication challenges are the top killer of relationships. So your communication needs to be strong, it needs to be clear, and it needs to be consistent and received in a positive way from the recipient. So if you're someone who's received feedback in the past about something you've said or written, it might be a good idea to have a neutral third party audit some of the things that you're sending and help you soften a bit. I, I've known several people in my working career who are so wonderful in person, but then when I receive their emails, I go, oh, there's my dog. There's Arthur. He's getting comfortable. Um, when I get their emails, they're very nice in person, but when I receive their emails, I'm like, what, what is that supposed to mean? It's felt like a slap in the face. So your tone doesn't convey accurate, accurately through your writing. So you need to thicken up the layers of friendliness via email or text. If your writing isn't really in line with your intention, you can also use a program called Grammarly that tacks onto your email and other documents, and it has indicators, it has little icons. So if you're being very professional, it has a shirt with a tie, if you're being very friendly, it might have a smiley face, but those indicators of tone, in addition to fixing your spelling and grammar, it's gonna help you get better in tune with the way that your messages are likely being perceived. And also, People do make a lot of judgments when it comes to spelling errors and grammatical errors. So getting, getting a handle on that, if it's something you struggle with, will help you with your overall brand emit a very professional outward feeling. Next, we need to check our consistency with our current social media and online presence. So if you were looking at your Instagram feed or your website or your Facebook page or whatever, TikTok, YouTube, YouTube, if you were looking at this as a stranger, what message does it send? What themes are you picking up? If your Facebook page content shifts from drunk college pictures to drunk brunch pictures, you might want to curate things a little bit differently. Unless that's the image you want to project, this fun loving also might be wasted on a Wednesday afternoon agent. No judgment. There's a niche for that too. The sure that's a great way to meet people. However, if that's not the image you want to project, you might want to archive some things, start a new page even, do the things you need to do to clean it up because social media is your reference. That's the first place people look when you start interacting with them. They want to know if you're a real person. They want to know if you have anything in common. 
And they want to get an idea if you're someone that they should continue making contact with. So just like those first impressions we talked about with the, you know, the way you wash your hair, the way you wear your clothes, the way you wear shoes when you're out in public, I don't know, the way you put yourself together. We're all forming these, we're all forming these judgments on one another. And it's not in a negative way. It's how we keep ourselves safe with our prehistoric human brains. So do that inventory of your current brand online and off. Is this the image that you want to stick with? Or can we begin to curate our style and content to get you to be and project to be the person that you've grown into and want to become? Because it could be that you're going, you know what, I got to pull it together. And this is the person that I need to, to become. All right. So looking at your outward facing social media, are you creating a positive impact? Are you helping or hurting in your day-to-day -day messaging to the outside world? Are you bringing a benefit and educational information to the public? These are the questions that you should be asking yourself as you do this audit. Now, as you build your consistency, you can even go so far as to have a catchphrase or something you wear or do regularly that stands out to cue others that it's you and your brand. Maybe it's something you paste at the bottom of every post. Maybe it's certain emojis that you always use. Maybe it's a hat or ear, you know, you love big earrings or I've started wearing big earrings. I used to wear lots of fun skirts, but now that I work from home, I switched to big fun earrings because <laughs> I can't see my skirts because I'm not standing up on screen. But what is it? that you could do to make people think of you. There's an agent I used to work with and she wears Lily Pulitzer all the time, year round, very colorful. And that's that's sort of her hallmark of her, her personal brand. So think about the various ways you can cue people because what we're doing to a degree is conditioning one another that when you see this, you think of me and you think of real estate immediately after. But ask yourself, with your if you do use a catchphrase or anything like that, ask yourself, what could, what could people think this means when they hear it? What are the different ways they, they could interpret this? Okay? Always put yourself in the recipient's shoes and be creative because not everyone gets it the way you do. Now, when it comes to social media, consistently posting is really important. You don't need to post every single thing you do in a day, but you also need to post very regularly so that you're staying in front of your audience, you're reminding them of how to get in touch with you and how to be a part of your services. Don't just post to post. Are you putting out content with purpose? All of your social media posts need to have at least one of these three qualities, education, entertainment, or emotion. So is it educational? Your audience should feel like this is giving them some type of information that they didn't have before. They're going to be asking themselves, what does this do for me? Why should I continue watching this? And you should be able to answer that question before you post the content. Is it entertaining? There's certainly value in entertainment. Funny, exciting, dramatic. If it's not educational or emotional, make sure it fits in that educational quality. And last, you might be asking, well, how do I elicit emotion through my social media page? Share your why. Share something you're frustrated or fearful about on occasion. Share how you've helped someone what the results were, what it meant for you, be real. But on the rare occasions that you do express frustration or some with something, make sure you don't turn it into a regular gripe session. Yes, you want to be authentic. However, complaining isn't going to be a big driver of followers. That's probably not what you want your brand to, people to identify your brand with. Also, and this is something 
that I I like to think I shouldn't have to say, but there's been a few occasions. So I always like to throw it in when we're talking about getting on the topic of this. If you do choose to complain about a client, even if you don't use their name, even if you don't use any identify, you're like, no one ever would ever know this is them, but I need to vent. I need to shout about it on Instagram. I would, first of all, I would never recommend doing this, but the people watching are going to wonder if one day you would say something similar about them if they choose to work with you. So be very careful when it comes to publicly venting, because if you're going to fuss about one client, they might think that you're going to fuss about them in the future. And that's probably going to be a big deterrent for people to work with you. Another way to be really consistent with your social media is to create a series that you post on weekly. This is helpful because you don't have to come up with a 100% new client. Market Update Monday, Home Tour Tuesday, Walk Through Wednesday, where you can show a model home or another listing that you're touring. I know a broker in Miami that gets up every morning and he rides his bike to the beach and he posts the sunrise every morning. And it's not real estate related <laughs> unless he's got his logo. They do beach cleanup and things like that. So he does tie it to his business. But I know I can count on him to show me the sunrise in Miami every, every day, every single day, seven days a week. And that is part of that following conditioning. They're coming to know you, they're getting familiar with their content, and then they grow to expect it and want it. And then they will be able to ask you for more of the stuff that you are putting out. So in your consistency, you're going to try some new things. Some will work and some will flop. Don't view a struggle or a setback as a negative thing. If your first attempt doesn't have wild success, just, just adjust your sales and keep going because the things that are happening, they're happening for you and not to you. They're steering you. Okay. That didn't work. I need to go in a different direction. That needs to go in a different direction. If you think about your life as a whole, that seemingly negative thing that happened that challenge or struggle, that's led you to exactly where you are now. You don't learn by people telling you things. You're not, you're going to learn how to do the next thing, how to get started. That's the purpose of this workshop. But the best way for you to learn is through experiences and getting out and trying and failing. That's so much of part of the process. A failure or a challenge isn't a sign that you should stop. It's just a sign that you should, okay, I turned right. Now I got to get back on the path. I'll go a little further and I'll turn left. Just go down a different path. Your goal doesn't have to change, but don't be, don't be so committed to the actual path to get to your goal because it's not going to go like you think it's going to. Okay. What you envision with the first iteration of your personal brand probably isn't going to be the last iteration of your personal brand. You're going to change logos. You're going to change colors. You're going to change your hair. You're going to go back to wearing fun skirts instead of earrings. Whatever it is, don't be married to how you think it's going to look. Be married to putting in the work, the process, which includes failure, and be married to your goal. But over committing and really wanting things to go a certain way. I heard someone the other day say that the definition of suffering is wanting things to be different than they are. And that was like, whoa, okay, that makes sense. So accept the way things are going, but be really actionable, intentional at the same time. Okay continuity, and you're going to hear me say this a lot because man, I believe in it so much. Continuity is the secret to success. You only lose if you stop. As you create and curate your brand, it's really wise to have successful examples of what you'd like to achieve with your personal brand as a reference and who to look up to. 
So think about who the real estate influencers are that you're currently following and which of those do you want to emulate? Now, I'm not saying that you want to copy what someone else is doing or saying, but the same theory applies with showing up to your office and being around top producers. If you hang around successful people, if you see what successful people are doing, if you hear about their days, you're going to pick up more on their habits and see what's working. And it's going to be easier for you to be successful because you have these really positive behaviors and habits to model. So find your influencers that you you know, oh, I would like to have that real estate empire. I would like to have that many followers. I would, I would like to emulate them in this way. Look at what they're doing, when they're doing it, what they seem to be getting great responses to, and then figure out how to translate that to your own personal brand. Because you're one you won't even want to do it the same way. If you're watching someone who has 10 million followers and you only have 350, it's not going to translate well, but you can break it down and do something similar and put your own spin on it so that it gets you some traction too. So watch them and do what they do, but in your own way. Another step in getting really consistent, once you have a firm idea of what you want to, your brand to be, is to really live your brand. Now, your personal brand needs to be an authentic window to who you are, what you believe in, how you work. And it's easiest to begin with a personal brand that's really similar to your actual lifestyle. That's part of the authenticity. So having that genuineness, it's gonna make it easier for you to continue on and stay consistent. Because if you're working to create something that isn't who you truly are, or maybe goes against who you truly are, it's going to be more work. There's a reason why it doesn't feel right. So make sure as you live your brand, as you walk around your neighborhood or go wherever, think of yourself as wearing that marketing hat with your logo on it. I'm here to represent me in every single thing that I do. And I'm not saying that you have to be professional wherever you go and doop -doop 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 and handing out business cards, be yourself. But remember, people are watching you. And when you get into this very public service industry, you become a local spirit, a spokesperson. You are now a community figure. And you need to view yourself as a community figure so that other people will feel about you the same way. So to continue on, yes, that's right. We're only in step two. Don't worry, I'll get you out of here at four. Another thing we need to do to build consistency is to perform an audit of our online presence. And this is on your worksheet. So don't worry about writing all these down. See how I've done this to help you. And I'm going to put it in the chat too, because it's easier if we all read along together. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform an audit of our online footprint. We're going to remove any threats, those drunk pictures from college or whatever, hurting your reputation in your search results. So older posts you want to archive or remove, whatever. All right, so we're going to take a look at everything through that stranger's lens that we were talking about and pick up on our themes. What message is this sending me? Do I need to change my message? What, where do I need to go from here? We're going to take down the things that we feel are going to hurt our personal brand or our reputation, which is really the same thing. And then we're going to start creating and posting things that highlight our best qualities. And then as we go, we're going to maintain, we're going to maintenance that reputation. So perform these audits regularly, because if you ignore your social media pages, people can comment, people can tag you in things. You can show up in places online that you don't even know where you were. So you need to go in and intentionally search for yourself to see where you're showing up see what people are saying about you and act accordingly. 
get them to remove it, maybe change your tune about some things if the public isn't receptive to it and so on. And then we're gonna monitor those, monitor, monitor those results and tweak your strategy based on the successes that you have. So this isn't something that you can determine in a week or two, but over a period of time, you will be able to tell what posts work, what your audience is mostly interacting with, those types of things. And then you can replicate the things that you're getting the most reactions from, the most interactions from, and the most leads from, okay? All right, once we've completed this audit, we're gonna start posting consistently with content that aligns with our new personal brand. We're gonna to wanna to build awareness. Staying in front of our audience is really important. So tie what you're sharing regularly to real estate so that you condition them. Remember our ultimate goal, when they think of real estate, they think of you simultaneously. That's the goal you're looking to condition them to. And here are some ways you can do that. Find ways to demonstrate your expertise within the industry. Show them your experience. If you see yourself as an authority on the subject matter, other people are going to also. I saw a clip last night, actually. Uh, Mike Ferry, it's like a 30 second Instagram reel. Mike Ferry said, um, he said, there is no one better to teach you real estate scripting than me. And I was like, ooh, that's a bold statement. And then he said, he put his stuff down and he goes, if I don't believe that, how do I expect you to believe what I have to, to tell you today? And that really goes along with our topic here today. If you don't believe what you're putting out, they're going to pick up on it. I mean, a group of people, by definition, isn't very smart. And an individual is super smart. And they know instinctively if you're trying to pull the wool over their eyes. So create a story around your personal brand that your audience can interact with using video, asking questions of your audience, find ways to engage with them. These are the things that are gonna keep them coming back for more. We're human and we're always looking for others that we connect with, a shared interest, finding people that we feel like we belong to something larger than ourselves, a community. A lot of successful personal brands and social media accounts are about 90% lifestyle and 10% business. So this tells us that your subscribers are there for you. So don't keep that from them. We don't want our social media just to be pictures of houses that we've ratified or sold. You've seen those accounts where it's like, just sold, just sold, just ratified. And that's hundreds of it, which is excellent. It tells me that you're doing business, but that doesn't tell me that I'm going to get along with you. It doesn't tell me that you're gonna take great care of me. Get personal and share what you're doing and what you're about. Use your social media to document what you're doing in your approach. And the more human and real it feels, the more people are gonna to wanna to interact with it. So show everything, show the good, show the bad. If you get locked out of a house on a showing, show that, that's actually pretty funny. I used to do it all the time. That was my nemesis when I was in production was the door handles and locks. Behind the scenes footage and information is especially compelling. So lean into that. All right, so we're still on consistency, don't worry. Part of this story you're building is your elevator pitch. Do you have an elevator pitch? Do you have an elevator pitch, Rosario? Maybe, sort of, all right. So this is good then, because we can dig into it. Can you effectively, here's what you need to ask around your elevator pitch. Can I effectively and succinctly communicate to someone what I do and why they should work with me? Most of our interactions with the public, they're gonna be either online or really brief interactions in person before they become a client. You'll be in line at the store, you'll be at a ball game, in an actual elevator, kid's birthday party, whatever. So use the information that we talked about today and the worksheet that I'm gonna circulate at the end and figure out a way to get your message across in just a couple sentences. You want something that's enticing them to find you online after you part ways at that 
at whatever meeting that you're at. Okay. That's part of your personal brand. All right. Now that we've created a cadence for our consistent online and a little bit in person presence, let's hit back our list. We've defined our brand and identified our target audience. We've established a consistent online presence. And now we're going to further work to curate our offline presence. So we've talked a bit about our a bit about our appearance, but the online and offline you, they really need to be in alignment with each other. If you're very polished online and you're a wreck in person, that isn't you living your brand, okay? And again, we're not striving per for perfection. Nobody's perfect, but the you that shows up to that listing appointment or to that buyer appointment needs to be pretty damn close to the you that they saw online, all right? You don't want the mom changed her spaghetti recipe to show up instead, okay? So audit yourself the same way that you would audit your online presence and find ways to lean into that authentic you that you are or want to become, depending. One of the biggest things that you need to do to accomplish this is to believe in it to the core of your being. Because like we said earlier, if you don't see yourself as the expert and know on a cellular level that I am the best person to help you buy or sell a home in this market, that uncertainty, if you aren't that certain, that uncertainty is going to bleed into all of your communications, your text messages, your emails, your phone calls, and that's going to undermine your personal brand. And that's why we spent so much time at the beginning of the call asking those introspective rhetorical questions, because the biggest driver of this is that you have to believe it and you have to believe it so strongly that other people are going to be like, oh yeah, I believe that too. I know that they know what they're talking about. And this is the part of living your brand. Believe deeply in yourself and what you're trying to accomplish. And by doing that, all of these other smaller things are gonna naturally fall into place for you. All right, so we've done steps one, two, and three. Now we need to create and nurture, nurture relationships and network. So you are in the relationship business. So take your updated brand on the road to help that chief marketing officer, that's you, spread awareness about your profession and your brand, attend industry events, join professional groups online and off, and make your presence and profession known absolutely wherever you can. You're gonna wanna get comfortable talking about your work and what you do in non-real estate settings. This is where your elevator pitch is gonna come on. So you're not gonna to wanna to be too heavy handed, but practice that pitch to give people just enough of an idea of who you are so that we can hit that ultimate goal. When they think about you, they think about real estate, all right? Next time someone mentions real estate, they're gonna be like, Rosario, I know exactly who I need to call, all right? So our last step, ask for feedback and adapt. Your audience has their own preferences. So ask them periodically, what type of content would they like to see more or less of and adjust accordingly. This is a really great way to boost interaction with them and nurture your relationship. So like we said before, we're not going to get too married to the way we think it's going to go. Don't settle in too hard with the way you think you're doing things. That's going to evolve over time. This relationship with your audience, what worked in the beginning, isn't going to work six months or a year later. It's not a set it and forget it type of thing. So ask regularly for feedback. Please don't take it personally when they tell you what they think because you asked and then adjust your content and your actions moving forward to create that best experience for your clients and future clients. But let's stay authentic and in our brand, in line with our brand. For example, if someone says, hey, I really would like I really want to see less of X. And you think, wow, that's. That's like one of my top three things that are important to me personally, okay? 
don't stop posting about X and sharing about X. This is your opportunity to stay true to your brand and allow them to unsubscribe because no, no hard feelings. We just weren't meant to work together. Okay. So walk that fine line of getting feedback and taking it into consideration, but stay true to your brand. Because if you only do what they ask you to do, it will evolve into you being inauthentic. And that's not what we're going for. All right, we've covered a lot of ground today. And I want to invite you to use your notes, use the worksheet that I'm going to put in the chat and email you tomorrow and start digging into your personal brand, okay? We have a Facebook group, share what you're doing so we can follow along and support you. And please remember that you don't have to have it all figured out to get started. Keep going, you're doing great. And thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Chris, that was great. Thank you.